Hello, everyone, and a welcome to today's webinar. We will be starting in just a few moments from now. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar, uh, we'll be talking about, uh, this is actually part one in a series of webinars, and we'll be talking about the new features that we've added inside SolidCam 2022. And uh, it'll be given by myself, uh, together with uh, uh, Michael Vinetsky and Daniel Jurisa. Uh, but before we start, uh, Emil Somech, uh, CEO of the company, would like to say a few words. So Emil, go ahead. Emil, you're on mute, so we don't hear you. Hello, everybody. I'm sure some of you are on vacation, either sitting near the sea or in the mountains, and you took time to watch what's new in Solid Count 2022. We are, we are showing you today our great version Solid Count 2022. We have been working on this version really for a long time and deeply checking it. Sydney, our VPQA, can attest to that. So you should be confident that it's a very well checked version. Actually, we could have released SOLIDCAM 2022 earlier, but since we had a new functionality coming in SOLIDCAM 2021 through Service Packs, we decided to wait until we reached now Service Pack 5. And that's when we decided to release SOLIDCAM 2022. In the PowerPoint that we have shown you, there is about 50 pages of enhancements. Most of these enhancements are available to you today in uh, SP0, but some of the enhancement will be added later in coming service packs. And by the way, we have opened now the version only for our resellers because we want them to study it very well before we open it to you our customers then they'll be able to answer your questions and support you the best we'll be releasing service pack one at the beginning of september and we'll be showing it in our two major exhibitions in september the amb in stuttgart in September uh, 13, starting, and IMTS Big Show in Chicago, starting in September 12. So if you happen to be in either in Stuttgart or in Chicago in September, visit our big booths, where we'll be showing uh, live cutting on CNC machines, and also we'll be showing our new additive printing uh, systems from desktop metal. So, enjoy the webinar. Okay, Emil, thank you very much. Uh, so, let's get right on with the webinar itself. And uh, I will be starting off uh, first showing you the uh, associative coordinate system. Uh, then after me, we'll have uh, Michael Vineski, who will be showing you position sharing between coordinate systems. And it will be finished off by Daniel Juritza with uh, new tool table enhancements and MCO enhancements. So let's get started. And um, I believe you can see my screen now. Uh, and I'm gonna start off, as I said, with the new associative coordinate system. Uh, and trust me, I will not be showing you in PowerPoint. I just have this one slide I have opened here, and then I'll actually show it to you in the uh, program itself. Uh, now, as you know, in uh, up until now, uh, one of the issues inside our regular coordinate system was there was no uh, associativity. Uh, if there was the part was changed, the coordinate system stayed exactly where it was before. It didn't uh, it didn't update if it was on a specific say hole, for example. It's and the hole moved. They would not move with it. You would have to redefine your coordinate system. Also, editing a coordinate system, um, you would not 
uh, <laughs> editing was practically like creating a new coordinate system. So it's very hard to edit uh, uh, the coordinate system. And we've also made lots of improvements as far as associativity as the levels. So let's take a look of, uh, actually at the program itself. And I'm gonna actually show you uh, two particular parts. Uh, it's actually gonna be the same part, but in two different ways. Um, okay, um, I'm going to start with this particular part that you see on the screen. And uh, I just want you to note one major thing even before I start, if I were to look from the top view of the part, and it may not be very noticeable, but you'll see that even though the part itself is a rectangle, it's at a little bit of an angle uh, tilted with, this is a little higher than this side over here. Uh, the reason why I did that, you'll see that in a few moments. Okay, so I'm going to start my uh, new um, milling project. And as you can see, we're getting our coordinate system now on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna go into my coordinate system. Uh, now, if you take a look, our first option is our new option, which is select associative face, okay? Uh, you'll also note that all the fields inside the uh, the panel itself, they're all associative fields, okay? You can see that over here. They're all open fields, not just check buttons or anything like that. What you choose something, you'll also see it. Now, uh, you'll also note, if I go to the very top over here, we always had uh, these options, top corner of model box. We still have those, but a lot of the times these were not all as useful as we would like to it have been. So we've added something called auto location, auto location top, and auto location bottom. I like working on auto location top, and let's see exactly what auto location actually means. Well, if I were to say click on this surface over here beforehand, and I was in the previous version, if I had top of corner, it'll automatically go to a specific corner. If I were to click over here now on this corner, this part over here, it'll go to the closest hot point. The hot point means one of the points on this automatic box on the top. So you can get it actually more towards where you need it even from the very, very beginning. Okay, uh, there's another thing I can do is if I go back, you can see also, when I click in here in this field, you can see exactly what I had picked to create that coordinate system. And if I want, instead of creating a coordinate system on the corner, if I were to um, click on an, a, a cylinder, you'll note it'll be at the center of that cylinder. So I don't have to go ahead and say, okay, center of, uh, of uh, a round face or anything like that. Putting it on order location would automatically recognize that it's a cylinder and it will go to the center of that over as well. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to here. Okay, to that point over there. Now, remember, I told you that the that the part itself was at a slight angle. If I were to look at the top view, you can see that the automatic box that was created that is according to the global uh, coordinate system but the part itself is not exactly that way. Therefore, we automatically jump, the system automatically jumps to direction X or Y. I'm gonna pick direction Y, and you see right now it's at the automatic. When it's an automatic, it goes according to the global. But if I were to come over here, okay, by automatic, click on say this surface, I can pick now a surface, it'll automatically straighten itself up and have the X going according to that surface over there. Again, now let's take a look at the top view. You can see now that the box itself has straightened itself up. So it's, it's exactly the way it's supposed to. That's why also this area, this field is an important field to use. I almost use it all the time just to make sure that my eyes are okay in, in case I don't see it well, that it's working well. Okay, you can also see that every single time I click on something, you'll see exactly what I used. 
Okay, let's go a little further down. And you can see we have our pick origin. Now in pick origin, we have already a, it's already filled out and it says auto 13. What is auto 13? That is the actual point where it's at. This is an automatic point that was created by us and it's attached to that point. So you can see already that associativity is starting to play a role over here because now we're attaching ourselves to specific points or faces. Now, um, if I were to go to say pick X, Y origin, let's say I pick this cylinder over here like I did before, okay? If I click on that, sorry, pick uh, X, Y origin, click on that surface, you'll see it'll jump to the center of that surface, uh, that, uh, our, of that uh, cylinder, it'll stay on top, and if we look at the fields that are filled out over here, all of a sudden the X, Y origin will say it's at the cylinder center. And the Z is what now became the automatic. Because automatic was all of them in here, but now since we have this, the Z now is automatic. Now, the Z, by the way, is something we never had before. Okay, that's also something new. If I want, I can pick a Z level. If I wanted to get before to a specific Z level, I had to measure it and then start writing it in inside my modified delta. I don't have to do that. I can go into pick Z level, okay, and say I want to have my Z level on that level over there, okay? You can see that my coordinate system jumped down to that surface, and you can see the surface over there as well, okay? Um, Okay, uh, I'd like to click on OK and go to my Levels page. And I want to explain certain things about my Levels page. I'm going to get go back here a little later on explaining some of the stuff over here. But let me accept this. And you can see that we have our Levels page with different types of fields here as well, being associative and delta fields. Why do we have this? How does it work? To show that best to, and for you to understand the best, let me close this part actually. And I'm going to open up another part that's very, very similar to that particular part that I had open now. It's the exact same part, but this time it has clamps on top of it. Okay, so I'll start again, a new project. And let's click on uh, let me open up my coordinate system. I'm going to click on, say, over there. You can see that's right in the center of the top over there. And as usual, I like to pick my uh, uh, automatic direction, even though, and I have that as well. You can see that over here. And you can see that over here. And as I showed you before, I want to put my Z level on purpose over here. Not, I may not necessarily want to work that way, but in order to explain something to you, I'm going to leave it there on, the, on that level over there. Okay, now I'm going to accept. Now, let's go into our levels plane. Now you'll note that we have our tool start level. It's at the default of 160, whatever it was inside my default settings. Now, what I really want is as follows. I want my tool start level I have wanted to make sure it's above my clamps. I'm just going to click the top of the clamp. And I'll just add a delta uh, uh, field to go on top of that. Say another 55 mil uh, 50 millimeters. Okay, 50 millimeters. Fine. My clearance, again, my clearance, I also want that to be on top of my clamp, just like you showed it over here. And on top of that, I want it to go another 10 millimeters. You'll also note that these are associative fields, okay? My upper level for the part over here, lower level, you know what? I'm gonna click on the line. Remember before, if I clicked on the line, it wouldn't pick up it would, or it wouldn't be associative. Clicking on a line now, I can do make that, it will show it as associative. And of course, my lower delta level, I may have it at minus six. Okay, if I were to say go and accept this, you can see all of the fields 
inside my coordinate system manager. You can see my tool start level. You can see it when I pick. And you can also see that we have 50 millimeter delta above that. Same thing with my clearance level. Same thing with my upper level. You see exactly where it is. And the same thing with my lower level with the six millimeters below the uh, field over there. Okay, I'm going to accept it now. And we've created the coordinate system. Now, let's let's play around a little. You see this surface over here? This clamp over here? Okay, let me open up the clamp. And uh, I'm going through my tool shop and, uh, and I'm looking for a clamp that has a thickness of 15 millimeters and they're all being used. And the one I have instead is let's say, instead of 15, I'm going to make this 25 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so that's what, I, that's what I have to use now. So I'm going to save it. Now let's go to our coordinate system. And you see, first of all, we have the associated, that has the synchronization sign for that. So I'm going to right click and synchronize. Let's go into our uh, coordinate system manager. And if I were to go into edit, you'll note the following. Before this was 55, now it's 65. Okay, so you're always sure that it's gonna be 50 millimeters above my clamp. Same thing with my clearance level. Okay, now my upper level stayed the same, it hasn't changed. Okay, that's fine. Now let's do something else. Let's go into the part itself and make some changes on the part. Okay, first thing I wanna do is you see this edge over here? It's 10 millimeters. The change that was made for this over here, let's see, let's change it to 20 millimeters instead, okay? And I wanna make one more change. Let's go over here and change this from 25 millimeters to 28 millimeters. So that means that this uh, cylinder over here, this cutaway cylinder over here has now moved further out. And my home position is a point to that cylinder. Okay, let me close the part, obviously saving it. Okay, now first let's take a top view of the part and you can see where my coordinate system is. And you can see where the hole is now also, where the cylinder is. If I were to go over here and now synchronize, first of all, you'll see that the coordinate system is now back to the center of that cylinder. But now let's also go back into my uh, coordinate system manager. And if I were to go into edit, um, you can see now that this is 75 millimeters. Okay, same thing here. You can see my part upper level now is 50 millimeters instead of 40 millimeters. My part lower level stayed the same. Now, if you remember when I, I started the, uh, talking about the things we couldn't do in the old uh, coordinate system was when we did edit coordinate system, we would have to do something. Uh, we'd have to make uh, practically from, from brand and from scratch. What I'd like to do is I'd like to actually change my coordinate system from being on this Z level. I'd like it to be on that Z level over there. So if I go to edit coordinate system, you'll see that everything is remembered from before. We, we see everything and I can go directly to where I want to go in order to make the change. I don't have to create anything from scratch. I'll just go back to my Z level and just pick this as my Z level. If I accept that, you'll see now that my part upper level is zero, tool start level is 25, going to my clamp, 50 millimeters above that, clearance level, 10 millimeters above my uh, actual clamp over there, and everything is automatically updated and very easy to work with, okay? Uh, now, there's one last thing I'd like to show you, and then I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Michal. I wanna go back to the, um, actually, I can do it on this part as well. Uh, let me go back into the coordinate system. 
You know what? I'd rather show it on the other part. It's a lot easier to see. Okay, so I'm going to go back into um, this particular part that I started before. Again, create a coordinate system. Do the exact same thing. And I'm going to create it over here. Give you my X direction. So right now it's attached to that automatic point. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about our modify by rotation. Okay. Now, um, you'll note that modify by rotation, clicking on this will automatically turn it every 90 degrees. We have it together with here, but I can also write in a value. Okay. If I were to write in a value of, let's say, 30, okay, and click over here, you'll see that this is my main rotation, my major rotation is around Z. You can see that number one. Okay. Now, basically, that means that on the machine, it's going to be like this. That's how it's going to look on the machine. Okay. All right. Now, sometimes, I mean, you can pick up your, you can pick up your machine, but there are some times where people have uh, the part make that maybe I, I, I over exaggerated with the part, but I want you to be able to see it very clearly. Sometimes they would have the stock exactly the way this is over here. Okay. And they wouldn't want the home position over here. We have a reset button. Okay. And as you can see, that the reset. And note, we have something here right now. It's called pin rotary point. Right now, the rotary point is pinned. It's pinned to that corner. If I unpin it and write in here now 30, what actually happens is that the automatic box actually turns and the coordinate system goes with it. So you can work either way, whichever one fits you best. That is the way you can work. This is what you want, fine. You want to work the other way, whichever is best for you. We give you those options inside uh, the new coordinate system. Okay, so I'd like to now uh, turn this over to uh, Michael. And Michael, you are now the presenter. And you can go ahead and show your screen just a question which screen i am showing okay just make your microphone a little louder okay is the correct screen i'm showing now now it's correct now it's correct go ahead okay. so uh, welcome to uh, our presentation of solid count 22 uh, what's new uh, thank you so sydney for his uh, presentation. It's uh, always a pleasure to hear his presentations. And after he presented this uh, important feature of a associative coordinate system, in addition to it, we can we also have additional feature and I will talk about it during this presentation. Okay, so let's pass from the to the presentation to understand where we are. So first, we call this feature a uh, position sharing between coordinate systems. It's not such clear definition, so I will show it also in, in the CAD, in the CAM system. But let's say first, it gives you the possibility to define and change the mark of the operation without redefining the geometry. It's simple, but very powerful, because to do the same in 2021, you need to redefine the geometry, okay? So the first, uh, feature what we can do. A second, you can easily add max to your part, change it, move it to other positions in the country without uh, changing the technology or operations what you are defined. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the last one is give you the, the ability to copy operations between mark to mark and uh, also uh, 
uh, help you a lot when you're moving your parts from machine to machine with, from, with different kinematics class from five axis machine to three axis four axis and opposite you will not need to define a geometries from the beginning so let's switch to solid cam okay here we have a part that is, looks pretty uh, familiar for you i think i presented every presentation the same part uh, but what i he see here so i will delete stuff what i did here first okay and we have a, a simple part michael we don't see your part oh so it's the wrong screen yeah okay how i change screens here If you click on the arrow, underneath the arrow, it shows screen. Mm -hmm. You see a screen mm -hmm. drop down. You, you can switch screens. Mm -hmm. So now you see the right screen? Yes, now we see the correct screen. Oh, Go ahead. Much better. OK. So first, what we can see here is a simple part with several positions what I work on. And in these positions, I'm making a upper work from upper side make some pockets here pockets from opposite side and part is generally done where is the catch here you can uh, make a pair program run on the machine and recognize what's very frequency happens on, on this case if you have a precise dimension of this pocket depth in this case i think it's plus minus 50 micron uh, once the tool who was doing the external finishing operation is uh, changing his diameter doing the wear, you will need to uh, fix the, the depth of the pocket. Okay? If you want to keep this pocket precise, if the depth is very important, you can define the new max okay so let's go to covenant system i have already defined max so i have mark number three here okay and i have mark number four here okay and i will use it as additional references so i will have three different coordinate systems of machine 54 45 56 and each one will responsible for each pocket but how do i make it in my operations tree because this operation is defined in mark one so first let's add a new mark here in, in 2022 it's pretty simple i'm just going here make insert mark before and select my mark for for this operation now you see now all operations here will be done in mark 4 this is my mark 4 is all pocket operations on this side same i will do for the next pocket this one okay i'm just going here make insert mark before select number three and now all operations here will be relative to mark three and this operation and after it, I want to make relative to mark one again. I'm just going here, make eight mark, okay, before, and select mark one as reference. Now all these operations will done relative to mark one. So you see, it's in, without changing nothing inside the operation or reselecting of geometries, I changed all the structure of the, of the program. And now I can just go add probe operation for this surface, probe operation for this surface, for, for each mark, and make precise part without uh, thinking about the tool here for the finishing of outside contour. Okay. So I think this change is very, very major in SolidCam. And uh, first, let's see what is effect. The first one, if you go to coordinate assistance, I think you've already seen it, okay? You have now separate windows for max and for positions. 
So when you define the position, okay, make add, you automat you are not related to the Mac. When you define the Mac, you are not related to position. It's completely separate. Okay. Second change, and if you go inside the operation and you select the coordinate system, you cannot select Mac, to, Mac anymore here. You select only the positions. Okay. If you want to change Mac for this particular operation, you can go to Mac above and change it. Okay. By change Mac, select any other Mac. Okay. Or just add a new one if you want. Okay, so this is the first change you see in the control in a coordinate system manager. A second change in operation, and the first change is in the country. How we see now, okay, the Mac now is completely separated from the operations. And if you want, for example, to make this operation in Mac 1, you can just drag it here to the Mac 1, and all this operation will be done in Mac 1. Same. Okay, I can drag my operation to Mac and it will be done in Mac 4. So it's very easy by drag and drop to change the Mac of operations. If I want to remove, to, com to move back to Mac 1 for this pocket, I am just deleting Mac 4. And now you see all these operations will be done in Mac 1. Okay. So, uh, this change is, is in first uh, look, it's pretty simple, but it's very, very powerful. And uh, if you want to, to use this uh, functionality, you need to do following steps. It's also described in presentation, what you will get, but I will show it on CAM system. Okay, so first we ha go to solid CAM settings. Okay, in solid CAM settings, we have a very powerful page, okay? It's called miscellaneous bet options. Here you can find all options what we are put in our software, but is already well checked. Okay, so you can use it and enjoy these options. It's not dangerous for a machine. You can use it as you want. But we are taking into account some users who is, uh, don't want to move uh, to this particular work style or not now, he want to try it, maybe he will use it after, okay? So we put it here. You can go here and enable the feature, what's called flexible coordinate system, okay? Once you enabled, this coordinate system, this uh, country will automatically switch to flexible coordinate system, but not immediately. After you enabled flexible coordinate system, you have to go to VMID, okay? working style and here is the second row you see flexible coordinate system support here is disabled because I'm uh, already using flexible coordinate system okay and just enable it and save it once you enabled each part what you will open with this particular machine so if you don't want to change the machine you can copy your VMAD and save it uh, a different name uh, will be opened in flexible coordinate system style and you can enjoy this amazing functionality just take into account it's not big convertible so once you open the part with a flexible coordinate system style you cannot open it in older version so just make up it okay so uh, let's back to the presentation just to show again Okay, where we have this uh, change. So, how to use? I explained. We change VMID and change miscellaneous beta options, flexible coordinate system. Okay. In post processor, okay, there is no need to support it, a particular uh, feature. Okay, uh, better always to test your part before you uh, play with it because maybe your post processor have some very huge workarounds and uh, whatever uh, so just check it before you are using it okay it's one of the reasons what we why we uh, put it in a better option and uh, if you have any problems we will fix it in post processor our support team know how to do it and can do it very fast okay 
uh, and again, remind you, uh, make a backup for your part before you play with it. I surely will like it. It will save you a lot of work on redefining the geometries, okay, and a lot of work of uh, changing your parts or moving your parts from machine to machine with different kinematics. Okay. So, uh, thank you a lot for listening, and uh, I will give a word to Danny Juritsa. Okay, he will present. Okay, just our... one moment before Daniel takes over. Uh, Michal, there's only there's one question, and I think it's better we answer it now. It's a very simple question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they want to know if, how, if you can show them how do we change Mac only if for one operation. No, oh, easy. Example: I want to to make this operation with Mac four. Okay, I'm just going insert Mac before Mac four. Okay, and use it. Okay, and operation after, I will select insert mark before and back to mark one. Okay, so this is the way how to change mark for particular operation. Okay, if you want the next operation also to make a mark four, you can just drag it there. Okay, and there it's all. Okay, if you want move back to mark one. For all operations, you just delete the Mac, what you edit here, okay, and you will back to Mac one for all operations in what was before. Okay, thank you, Michael. So uh, we will now move over to Daniel, and Daniel, you are now the presenter, and you can share your screen. All right. Yes, we see your screen. Go ahead. You see only my screen, right? Right, I see only your screen. That's right. We see the part. All right. So let me just uh, minimize myself here. Just a moment, okay? Okay, I try. All right. So thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Michael. Uh, wonderful presentations and introduction. And uh, today, I, my part of the presentation would be to show you uh, new features in 2022 uh, that might change the way how you program the part. Also, Michael showed and, and Sydney, the, there are many things that uh, will improve in the part programming. Uh, I will show you a couple of these, uh, on, on, uh, but connected more or less to, and they might be very important, especially on the mill turn and, uh, and the Swiss type. But I will also start with some uh, minor updates that we also have in other parts of the software. So I will start with the setup itself and if you if you go into setup and i will open the machine preview and the very first change that we have and i consider it minor but i think it's worth showing it is that over here in the top we do have now a new uh, filters that was available in uh, in the operation level and also in the toolkit but not in the machine setup uh, machine preview i consider it very good because you can also show a tool to all the tools like in the toolkit, okay? Why this is important? And in the Milter machines, when you have the, the chuck or the, the, the call it, you know, if you want to know what is the uh, stock extension length, you know, sometimes it's very useful to see also the tools and stuff. So you can move all your access, you know, to a particular position, check, you know, your tools and setup, and uh, you can distinguish, you know, what will be your part extension length. So I consider that uh, as a pretty good uh, feature. And the next, the next detail is this cells, which uses us uh, here to shift the, the picture and the part itself in machine environment. And over here, now these cells in the past was just like, you know, put the value and also you can use the scroll wheel as you can see it over here. But we also add a functionality to put the math operators. So if I try to put here, you know, the value, it will automatically calculate and give you the value. This is a very useful when you're not sure you know what is the exact value but you want to shift it for a specific one relative to the to the last position that's been great okay so i think this is very good you know that you can also do it in any cell you know available in the machine setup um the next feature is available in in a machine option let me just use the fly out lead window in this case and Many times it happened to me that 
you know, uh, I, I start part programming on machine number one and either though that I may be selected the wrong machine from early beginning or maybe during during the part uh, programming, I realized that I had to do this part on another machine. Uh, there, each machine might be completely different in way of uh, what kind of machine options they have. And as you may know, these options might be very critical for the G-code output. Um, therefore, if you have two machines that doesn't have the same options and stuff, it might be either give you the values of zero or converted the, 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 the values wrongly, okay? Therefore, it is very useful to know these default values for each of the parameters without going into a VMID and check which one of these are the default. So we create an option which allows you to select particular parameter and reset it to the default value. If I change the default will, it will give me the value that was in the, in the VMID, right? It has also an option to reset all the defaults, or you have also an option to hold the control key and reset only those two defaults, or of course, you can also do it with the shift key as well. So quite nice option. I think it's not very useful. And yeah, one, one more detail here. We have also description here. So we add also description, we didn't have that before. Right, now let me bring it to one, my, one of my favorites, okay? So I will define one job. It will be a simple profile just to demonstrate with this feature. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this position two over here that you can see. And I'll just pick up the jump to that I already created. It is nothing special. I just, you know, create this line over here. And for all the people who use the machine preview, this, or for, or let's say the people who never use the machine preview, you know, for some reasons, I'll show you a good reason why you should start using it. So even though that I didn't go to the tools itself, levels, technology, and, and the rest, I can open my machine preview. Let me just maximize it. And I can see the all available tools on this machine. So if I zoom in over here, I will find that some of, I have here the arsenal of the tools that I can, that can be used in this job, right? So what I can do now, I can do a right click on any of these tools. You don't really necessarily need to click on the cutter itself. You can click on the whole assembly You can do a right click and select tool components. And what you see here is the drop-down menu because this particular tool consists more than one cutting point. So I'm just going to choose one of them. And it's done. I just will calculate the job. I didn't even go to the level tools and stuff, but you can see that everything gets selected. So it's quite nice. It saves your time going into toolkit, but it also pro it's, it's not about the toolkit that you need to do a few clicks more. But as you know, you know show, having the tools into a list especially for those kind of machines that has a lot of turrets, a lot of tools here, you know, it's much easier to visually go to the tool and just select it. So it, it can be a very big list, you know, and I think this one is uh, an easy way to do. Now, even though that I saved this job, I can easily now go and just pick up another tool. So I, I say, oh, no, this is the wrong tool, I will select this one. I just select it and you can see how dynamically, I didn't even calculate the job, this tool immediately jump, jumps to the very first position. Now, everything here, what you see, is specific submachine or specific part. And you can see that if I just move this window over here, you can know that I'm using specific submachine. This particular feature, it's not locked that you need now to use on a specific turret on a specific machine, but I can change the submachine. And as you can see here, I will try to use this tool over here. So I'll just do a right click and also select tool component. I also have here two cutting points. I'm go just going to select the first one. I'll just select it and can know the parts rotated just to maintain, you know, the same surface over here. And I have a new turret being used and I can now save and calculate. And you can note that now new submachine actually it's created. I think- uh, Daniel, I must so say, by the way, I'm just gonna interview, sorry that I'm interfering with you just for a moment. This to me looks extremely powerful and easy. It makes uh, it, it, it makes visibility, uh, it takes the guesswork out of, uh, out of finding the exact tool that you need. Very exactly. well done. Exactly. Now, as I say, this is not connected to a particular submachine or turret. You can switch it to different channel even. Okay, so I can go to the channel number two, to the channel number three. There's no limit in that. As long as you can, you know, um, 
select that particular tool because you know you, you might have a, a tool that it's not selectable by, by this operation like a tapping so for instance here if i zoom it in this tool over here it's a tap tool it's m4 there and if i do a right click on that you can note that that select tool component is not available because simply this tool is cannot be selected in this particular job so it's it's extremely good it's it's extremely, extremely nice and what i've shown you here is just you know uh, the linear tires rotary tires and stuff okay in another example i'm going to show you the same feature uh done in uh, when there is a spindle you know so it works a little bit slightly different okay that might surprise you as well okay now, once I have this, I didn't set up the levels, but it's not important. The next uh, topic that I want to discuss is about same feature, but in a toolkit. So if I open a toolkit, you can see a lot of tools over here, right? And if I, you know, decide that I want to change some of the holder or particular cutter or something, the same option is available also in the machine preview in, and also inside the toolkit. So if I go over here, and select the cutter, select tool component, you will know that toolkit will automatically select and highlight the tool component that you just picked up. If you don't have to click on the cutter itself, you can do also on the holder. So I will, I'm doing right click on the holder and then just select tool component. And you can know that he also highlighted me the holder. So let me try it. So I go over here, I do right click, select tool component. And I guess you, <laughs> you found the, the 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 piece in <laughs> in this because you can see that a lot of tools available here but <clears throat> you know the Milton and Swiss type users can easily find you know you know just by visually clicking on it. right um all right so there is another feature that I want to show you and uh, it's um connected let's say to this revolver and it openly happens to me that you know during my setup of the tools I just, you know, all over and over again, I'm going to the particular same library, let's say, to, you know, put more holders and more tools. Now, you know, if your holders and tool component are linked, as in this example, you can see that all the holders are linked, what you can do, you can do a right click on particular, um, particular um, holder, and you can have you have now a new options called open tool assemblies library link so let me just show you what you need to do before this option so you go to this particular library i will go to this find the library go into the folders it was a tarot okay so let's go to the live and here it is all right and every time you need to repeat the same stuff okay but now if you go over here right click open tool assemblies library link it will automatically bring you and select also this particular component. So that's super nice, super easy. Combination of the previous feature shown and this one, you know, saves a tons of time, you know, in managing your tool library. It's 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 really, really, really good feature. So I can go over here. So let me let me show you here. So I will take, for example, this this holder over here, select it. I have it here. I do a right click, open to assemblies library link. It's this one. Okay, I want to replace it. I want to replace it with. Ah, oh, there's one nice feature. You can do a right click stain in the last view. You can rotate the holder and changing now the, uh, the, the selection, it will remain the same holder, right? So let me just use this one over here. So I'll just do a right click while this one is selected, okay? And just click replace it look how easy it is to do this i will go to another one on the top this particular one is gsc 1310 i will just open the assembly library so i have only one that can be used more over here and just replace it in just a matter of second i'm changing complete to layout of the particular um, machine i hope uh, you like this one Okay, so let's go to another feature I like to, I like to show you. It's a very small one, but the old turning fans, you know, they would like this one. So I'll select this particular shank, okay? So I'll just select tool component. And it's available over here, okay? Now I will also rotate this tool over here in the preview so you can see which one I'm talking about. 
And this is how the tree looks like. Okay. Now, how many times it happened to you that you need to change your insert and stuff? And what actually happened, you know, that all the components of the, the thickness with length and, and, and parameter, it got reset. Okay. So this is not happening anymore. So you can just change the insert shape. As you can see, I'm changing the insert shape, but the relative position and the tooltip position remains at the same point. So I can change the insert shape. I can insert its diameter. I can change its thickness and the shank stays in that position. The next feature is that, let me just in this example, I would like to change the length of the shank. So instead of 70, I'll go with 90. Obviously, if I do 90, the, the, the shank will extend and tooltip will not be anymore in the same spot, right? And if I click on the holder itself, the holder itself has a left joint and the right joint. On this machine particular one, this is the zero geometry offset. And, um, by, do, and by defining them in this point, I can use new features. It, they're actually not, not really new, but um, it was located over here in the mounting. So it was like small button with three dots where you have those four options. Now we have this as an, as an icon where you can calculate orientation position, calculate the joints position, reset the position or set the position. So let me just do in this case, just I'll reset the position so you can see it is exactly at the right joint over here, the tooltip. But what I can do, I can just go over here and set the position according to my offset. So I can go and just, you know, change the offset over here relatively to that point. Great. And um, let's go to the next feature. Over here, we have also one holder that is length. Okay. So I will just for this now, I'll just break the length. When I, when I break the link, I can now add and change the joints. And small thing, you know, for everybody of you who maintain the, the, the libraries and the joints and the holders, now you all know that we were able to create um, static rotary linear joint. But once you did that, you were not able to bring it back. And now we have a new option is to do a set. So you can change the property of one uh, joint to the rotary, and you can always bring it back to the static joint and vice versa. Okay, so you can go to the linear and you can basically convert it to any other type of joint. Right, I hope I didn't forget some detail here. Yeah, I think that was it about uh, the toolkit. I'll now just jump to another part where I want to show you, you know, the, um, the MCO features. And while I'm opening another pod, I want to show you, you know, here we do have, you know, a standalone toolkit. So many of you are using them and uh, we have improved the quick launch of this one where you are able to create a new library and set the name as you can see, as you can see it over here. But what you can also do, you can open particular library component assemblies or machine tool setup, but you also have a recent file. You can very quickly jump, you know, into this, you know, uh, without going all every single time to create a new library. So if I go create a new library, you're supposed to go file and open it. And also the, the name now it's like fixed. So whatever you type there and accept it, it will be the, um, the file name. Right. So the, the, the part has been open and you've probably seen this part many, many time before is the NTX 2000. I very often use it in, in, in the webinar. And uh, I will show you this uh, particular feature that I've shown select tool, um, tool from the machine preview. And I will open this particular job. It's nothing special, just mill this slot over here. And I, I will not go to a tool section. Okay? I, I don't go into toolkit. I'll just open the preview and show you the rules that we have when this is a spindle type. So as you can see, this is a spindle type. And what we have here now, if you do a right click on the tool, you have select tool components. Here, what it will, what it will be listed is 10 recent tools or 10 tools that is available in a toolkit that gives you possibility to use it in this operation. So I can 
very easily just go over here and just change the tool. Look how dynamic this looks like. So I can go over here, change to the 50. Completely different uh, holder, uh, spindle position, but totally maintained maintain to the same spot because obviously, you know, we have the tool part here. Quite nice. Okay, next feature, um, MCOs. Yeah, okay, let's talk about the MCOs. So I'm going to add the MCOs, just going roughly through all the, the changes. So the first change is that the new icon. Yeah, I like very much the new icons. But what is also what is also changed? As you can see in this corner, small thing here. Now this window is completely resizable. Okay, so you can change the change the size of the MCO window. You know as much as you want. Okay, you can you can make it full screen if you want. But of, of course, pay attention that you cannot shrink it. You know to the, some minimum position. Okay, so the minimum is you know what it was before. Um, the next feature is the uh, possibility to to auto with column. So if you put any of the properties here, you can know that if I go to the home reference, you know the the column will you know become uh, like um, according to the to the value over here. So it's very nice uh, to to have this option. Also in the parentheses, you see the exact value of this feature. Um, right. The next thing that I wanted to show you is the option of adding the miscellaneous parameter where you have here a message. The message we actually supported in the previous versions as well, but what we have added is an option to import any text file into uh, this message box here. So if you go over here, I'll just put here the log, you can see that you put you know, everything that was in the text file. Now this is very important for the big companies or organizations where you have more Come programmers into one company, which very care about you know what are the comments that they will leave to the operators, and those comments they would like to keep them as a standard. So you can they can they usually store it in some in some network position you know on uh, uh, on some server and they just pull it out there. Pay attention that those are not linked, so it means that if the file got updated, you know this text will not be updated, so you need to call it again. Right. Um, next feature. The next feature I consider it one of the biggest updates, you know, that we have in the MCO, and it's called equations and functions. I have add here a movement, and we always have an option, you know, to have home reference, min limit. So let me just open here so I go through one of the examples. Let me just update the part position and what I'm going to do here. Let me just delete this. Okay, so I want to bring my spindle to the home reference and maybe, you know, move the Z to the minimum limit, right? So I go, I select home reference, home reference, but for the Z, I want to be min limit, but not really reaching the soft limit, you know, of the machine, but I would like to go plus 100, you know, to the right. Now, this way we actually supported also in the previous version and we didn't have problem with it. And as you can see, the value has been updated. So we calculated whatever was the minimum access uh, position and by adding a, a 100 there, you know, it will calculate the value. But there was a problem with this because sometimes we would like to keep the equation there and just edit the equation, but to maintain and to, to leave, you know, everything there the same. So now you can do that. So you go over here, and besides of all these options, at the end, you are going to have an equation. So click on the equation, and it will pop up this kind of dialog. In this dialog, on the left side, you have all the system variables that you can use in the equation, and on the right side, you can see the function. I will try to not, of course, I cannot go through all the examples how you can use it, but I will drop you just a small portion of the things what what are all the possibilities that you can do on various of your machines and functions, right? So I will go with the minimum limit here. And just as you can see the results, you can immediately see the, the value. And I'll just put here 100, okay? And I'll click OK. So nothing special happened, but now the, the, the equation, you can actually see it. So it, you can see the, 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 the variable and also the value. And then there is an equal sign and that's it. Now the advantages over this one, is that you can just change the value and it dynamically calculates the value and also you can find it here. 
Now, once you go and edit this and just remove the equal sign and hit enter key, it will again bring you know to the standard way of how you put the, the, the input, right? So this is about the equation, but the most I would say uh, interesting part of this is there are functions. Okay, so the function can be applied to a specific column, and in this example, you mostly of you who are using the you know, the Milton machines, they you know you know that x axis in most of the cases are coming as a diameter. Uh, um, input value right and so i can we always put everything in radial uh, therefore you have an option you know of of, of equation no sorry of, of the function so how to do that so i will apply the the the, the function over the x-axis at, at, as it is has uh, the most of the sense so the way how you can do it you go to the column of, over here do a right click and here you can input the value as a value or as a function so let me go to the function and you can note similar dialog appears, but there's a slight difference, okay? Because it's a function, you have this user input that must be in the equation, okay? Sorry, not in the equation, but in expression. So if you try to remove the user input, you cannot perform this action, okay? You will get their message about it. So how we can do it? Let me just put one example. So I can just take the user input and divide it by two in order to get the amateur, or it can also just multiply it for 0.2 and click OK. And now what we have on the left side is the, the thing that user inputs, and on the right side is something that user, uh, what is the real machine value movement? So what I'm going to do here, I'll just you know change these to, I want to go minus 100. And as you can see, if I do a minus 100, the calculated value is minus 50. Okay, so I want to go more, no problem. Let's go to 300, and it gets you know calculated value. So where this is useful, okay? Let me bring you one very good example where this can be used. So right here I have a tool change. Um, let's let me say that it's a classic MCO cycle where you want to make a tool change and preposition it for you know for a cutoff. So this is that kind of cycle. And what I have here is the, the cycle itself that calls the tool. And that I have here the preposition for to, towards the zero here. And I want to go preposition 100 radial. And it goes really 100 here radial, right? So what I can do now, I can do a diameter fairly easily. So I can go to MID. I can go to my cycle. And edit it. That particular movement is located over here. So I'll just go to the function, divide by two, save the cycle. Maybe I can now, you know, just change. Now it's not anymore the radial. It's sometimes, many times on the Swiss type, it's much better to put it as a diameter. Okay, so that's that's pretty pretty great. So you can go now. I will, you know, every time when you change the VMID, you need to reselect the cycle. Okay, so and here you go. So you have it here. As you can see, the positions the position is the same. Okay, except that now the input is in diameter basically. Oh, actually, I wanted to show you in the in the preview just a moment. <clears throat> so I go over here, zip position, and I get. I put one hundred. I want to be one hundred in diameter, and there it is, the fifty of the machine. I hope this is this one. This example was useful, but let me show you another example of uh, the function. So over here, when you want to have a cutoff where you want to pull out the part with the sub spindle, usually, you know, the way how we support this feature is that you need to remember what was the machine value before, and you need to know what is your part length, what is your uh, cut off width and how much you want to leave allowance in order to pull out the you know the, the part from the main spindle. 
And as you can see here, I have another MCO cycle here that tells me, okay, I want clamp position to be over here, okay? That's it, that's great, okay? The next MCO is the pull part. The pull part, just if you can, please remember this value, okay? 1332.5. If I go over here and open the machine preview and go into a part like this, if I go to the pull position, let me just go how it was. So it was the set application. So this was the last position over here. So I go over here, go to three dots. I take this value. I open the calculator. So this is how I usually use, you know, for the our pullout position. And I, I just put here, you know, I want to go for the part length. Plus I want to do, you know, the cutoff thread. And plus I want to go 0.5 more. So this is the value that I use, you know, to, I copy this value, I put it over here and I click okay. So this, by this way, you can see where was your previous MAC position and where is the new one in order to perform cutoff, right? But let me so show you how this can be done much better and much more easier. I'll go back again inside the VMID. You don't necessarily need to go through the VMID, okay? I'm changing the cycle itself, but you can change the operation always. So I'll go to the pull part. Everything what I'm showing you right here doesn't change anything inside the post processors. Okay, so this remains everything remains the same. So here I have the action. Uh, where is the part move? So instead of set up location, I'm going to use a function. And the function will be I'll just click on here in the beginning. And what I'm going to say is my current location, and plus the user input. So I'll click OK. I'll save the cycle. I will save an exit. I will go back to this MCO. I will edit it. I will again just reselect it as I mentioned earlier. I will just pull the part. And now I have my pull position. Maybe I could rename this also for the pull amount now because it's now relative position. So let me go to over here. Here we are. Okay. So what I'm going to do. I will just put the relative input, you know, of the pullouts, okay? So now we can support also the amateur mode input, also relative mode input, okay? So what I'm going to do here, I'll just type here 103.5 and just hit enter. So this is more user-friendly, okay, for, for, for you. It's much easier to fill in this, uh, in this way, you know, if you wish, and not to calculate it all the time. It gets things uh, much more easier. This is more or less the same what I wanted to show you on this uh, webinar and this in this webinar series. Sydney, if there is any questions, I'm uh, ready to answer. No, actually, you just have one comment of what you were showing, which was uh, great and very powerful. And uh, the comment I made before to you also as well. Uh, there was uh, one uh, question, actually, a comment made before uh, to Michal Runetsk, which I can answer uh, myself as well. Uh, we, uh, Michael showed the um, the option for uh, how you can change it only for one particular oper uh, op. We want to change the Mac only for one operation, uh, and uh, and he showed a specific way. Uh, there, there was a, a question of how to make it a lot easier. We just go to that thing and just change the Mac. Uh, now, I want everyone to remember also, actually, that's a very good suggestion. And um, this is one of the reasons also that this option right now is also in what we call a beta mode. Uh, that's why it's not open for everyone one yet. Remember that this is available. We are doing more improvements as we go along, as we as people start using it uh, or um, you'll will will take input like uh, feedback that that you give, and, and accordingly we'll also make improvements uh, as needed. And this definitely was a very good suggestion for it. Uh, okay, we are running a little bit over time now, so um, that is uh, basically it. All the anything that else that was written over here is written down in our 
uh, uh, inside our webinar. So we have any kind of other question that was uh, that was asked and will be answered later on also as well. Uh, as usual, also the webinar has been recorded uh, and will be available for everyone to view later on. So thank you for joining us in our webinar. Michal, thank you very much. And Daniel, thank you very much for the great presentation. And uh, we will see you next time at our next presentation. Take care, everyone, and have a great week. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.